Hello, 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 friends, I'm Philip Magnus, and today I'm talking about the new novella by Fonda Lee. Her Green Bone saga has gained the status of a modern classic over its publication between 2017 and 2021. I haven't read it yet, and so can tell you, hand over heart, Untethered Sky is a triumphant introduction to Lee's work chock full of compelling characters. This novella exudes a love and respect for the myths and legends of the Middle East. Two creatures and their relationship take center stage across untethered sky. The Rock and Manticore. Well, really it's the relationship between the human and the Rock that shapes this novel, but this other one is also important because, you know, we all need a bit of conflict in our fantasy novellas, don't we? The rock is a bird of prey, not unlike a giant eagle capable of picking up an elephant with its talons and carrying it off to its nest in the high mountains, at least in the Middle Eastern myths where it figures. Lee does not portray her rocks capable of quite such a feat. But that is not to say they are not spectacular creatures, true sheer size, and much more. Soon after protagonist Esther first encounters the rock she is to domesticate, Zara, she notes, with one massive talent foot, she could crush my head like a ripe apricot and tear out my entrails before anyone could make a move. Zara's physicality is a thing of beauty, and to watch her grow through Esther's eyes is to share in her love and tenderness for this magnificent creature, monstrous and petulant and cruel as it can, on occasion, be. What makes rocks so valuable as to be domesticated in the all-consuming way they are is that they are the sole natural predators to the malicious manticores who feast on humans. These solitary monsters are a blight on humanity, prowling the wilderness, attacking villages and outposts and the outskirts of towns in flurries of rage caused by human screams, most of all. And sure enough, screams accompany a manticore everywhere they show up. Savage beasts like these are a blight on the earth. And horrifying. The manticore turned its gaze on me, one long, infinite stare. Its eyes resembled human eyes, but whatever feeling or intelligence was behind them was alien and hungry. One iris was golden brown, the other was as blue as the sky. Lee paints such vivid pictures of these creatures the same way as when she sets up the hardships Ruka goes through to create the bond between themselves and their rock. The first third of the novella is committed to painstakingly imbuing the practice of rooking with life and tradition. Seeing Esther go through the hardships she does, seeing the personal sacrifices necessary, but also the camaraderie between the men and women who choose this path for themselves, it's something special. Take Darius, for example. I quote, Rooking is a proud profession that attracts some individuals motivated by personal ego and the number of kills they can attach to their names. Darius wasn't one of those people. He might not be happy about losing his quarry, but he was also relieved not to risk Minu, his rock, Slive. Darius is one of two major supporting Rookers who both serve as mentors and friends, the other being Nazmin. The stories of the tree and their rocks are intimately interwoven, with twists and turns I'd never dare spoil for you. It is a very easy novella to read, at barely a hundred and thirty pages, perhaps even less. To be a Ruka, to go back on topic, is to give your life to a beast, knowing all the meanwhile that this beast is driven not by the complex interweaving of emotion and rationality a human is, but by instincts that can only be grasped at a surface level. 
the relationship between Esther and Zara is a thing of beauty. To Esther, Zara is at once a tool of vengeance against the Manticores, a captive and extension of her will, even another self. To Zara, Esther is a captor, nurturer, caregiver, beastmaster, and more, much more than this. Mine is not, in any way, an extensive list, not by any margin. Nor are the roles of captive and captor clearly defined. Rather, the boundaries between the two are porous, captive and captor lost in the act of captivity, of possession and of being possessed. I quote, On the good days, you feel as if you and your rock are one. Zara and I were complete. We were in the sun and the wind, the sky and the earth, life and death, above the world and untouchable. Unquote. Zara comes alive in so many ways, Lee giving her personality in spades. Rocks are reminded that nothing is beyond God's power of creation. She is possibility incarnate. When she soars into the air, she takes part of me with her, far away from the constraints of the earth. She was also as tedious and demanding of my patience as only a large beast can be. She was like a recalcitrant child, one the size of a large man, armed with deadly weapons. Not a profession for the weak of heart. That much I can assure you. As far as freshman efforts in novella writing go, this measures up among the best and most charming of them. Conflict, excellent characters, plentiful action, and a unique bond between human and beast. All of that enclosed within a gorgeous cover. What more can you need? It literally is a fine evening's read. Untethered Skies by Fondely releases on the 11th of April. You can pre-order it now or get it at a bookstore near you, which you should absolutely 100% do, because it is a special book. I got my copy thanks to Ned Galley in return for a, an honest review, which I believe I have given to the best of my capacity, at any rate. I hope you read it. I hope you let me know what you think about it. And if you'd enjoy more reviews like this one, press that like button, share it with your friends, this video, or with your enemies. Hey, you can even dislike this video. I, with a hand and heart once more, promise that it is okay. It's fine. And, of course, don't forget to subscribe. That's a good one, right? That's what all the YouTubers say. Probably. I will see you next time. And, uh... I, I suppose that's it. Bye!